the C8 Corvette, probably the most divisive Corvette to ever come out of Bowling Green and the other plant before that. However, the newly launched E-Ray is even more divisive -er. But why? Let's dive in. Well, happy Tuesday, Tuesday, right? Yeah, Tuesday, boys and girls, and welcome back to the channel. Drink a little beer, hope you don't mind. So, so let me give you a little prologue before we start this video. So this morning around 8.30, 9 o'clock after the E-Ray was launched on the Chevy websites, I made a little post in a C8 Corvette uh, Facebook group. Uh, knowing it would cause a, a rift among the Corvette enthusiasts, I simply stated the E-Ray is a monster. Glad I'm on the list. Now think of this as a hornet's nest being thrown in a basement with 100 people and locking the door. I have a weird sleep schedule due to my work. I woke up eight hours later and the comments were exactly what I anticipated. It reminded me when I was 10 years old and uh, the great debate between the Sega Genesis versus Nintendo, but now it's ice cars versus electric. Some of my best comments were the fact that they hate it because it's all electric. We'll come back to the comments later. Now when the C8 first came out, the C8 traditionalists were very upset. The engine was in the wrong place, and many that were upset with it were convinced it was going to be a flop. However, the C8's gone on to be probably one of the most popular Corvette generations to date. I mean, don't ask me to look at the sales figures. And me personally fell in love with it, hence is why I have one in the garage, along with my C5Z outside. I feel like over the last three years, though, Corvette purists have kind of come around to the idea of a mid-engine C8, but they'll be damned if they own one until the prices start falling and then they're attainable and then they'll scoop one up. So the E-Ray with the E in its name lets everyone know that this Corvette's different. It's electrified in some capacity. And this has a lot of people pissed off. And if you don't really follow Corvette, at face value you see electric Corvette, you automatically assume slow Prius or all electric, boring, boo. However, once you realize the C8 E-Ray shares the same platform as the Z06, the wide body as the Z06, very similar suspension, a little soft, but pretty damn close. And it's quicker than the Z06, believe it or not, and actually sounds pretty damn cool even in stealth mode, which I did not see coming. And you actually get to keep the front front space, which really shocked me. I thought that would be all battery or motor, but no, the motor's compact and it's right behind the little compartment and the batteries run in the little tunnel. It's actually pretty clever. Side note, I made a E-Ray prediction video over a year ago. I would say 95% of what I guessed was accurate. Total guess. I don't have like like ESP or something, but no, it was pretty damn close. I was pretty proud of myself. Video below if you want to check it out. So I'm just going to say it. Someone's got to say it. Most, if not all, of the hate comments come from ignorance and or fear of change. Now, I will agree a 100% Corvette in the C8 platform will probably do nothing for me. And the E-Ray is the undeniable bridge to the inevitable all-electric Corvette. But that's a video for another time. Hell, even myself, though, when GM announced that the Corvette was going that engine, I was cautiously optimistic, but as GM, and I thought they would dick it up, their first attempt at a mid-engine car, there had to have been a reason why more motor companies don't attempt it. It's sure it's very challenging, and I was shocked. They actually did a really good job. They did their homework using Porsches, Audis, uh, Ferrari, you name it, and they got it right. All right, so back to my Facebook post this morning. Here are some of the comments that made me laugh, and some kind of confused me. One gentleman wrote, Really, it's not that powerful. The Tesla Plaid has a 1,000 horsepower. Most cars, 650 and over, all-wheel drive will beat it. A Corvette should never be electric. That's all I got to say about that. No way. Of all the car makers, GM has the worst history of hybrid and e-assist and EV, eco-technologies, etc. They have renamed it a million things, but it's always an adjunct of failure. It's not always about being the fastest. No electric motor will replace the sound of American muscle and added another 1,000 pounds of batteries, electric motors, etc. No, it's actually only 300 pounds. It actually shocked me. Another 100K markup, I suppose. Well, possibly, if you do it right, you can find MSRP like this guy. I made a video on that on how to do that. One gentleman wrote, it's surely not a monster. It's a good car for a hybrid or EV. For the folks that already have a C8 Stingray, not much of an upgrade. If you want an upgrade, go Z06. That thing's gonna weigh over 4,000 pounds and be slow. Except it's electric? So yeah, I had a lot of fun with these. That's just maybe 5% of the comments. You know what's a good thread when you look at the, the post and you have way more comments than likes and there's over 100 likes, so. With a lot of a lot of fighting in there. I, I didn't mean people to fight. I just wanted to hear the comments, you know. And a lot of comments uh, compared it to the Tesla Plaid, 
which is an all electric deal. Not really the same in my opinion. And me, the, the Tesla Plaid just looks like doo-doo. All right, so here are the specs per GM per the website. It'll keep the same Stingray motor, the 495 and 470 torque, respectively. Meanwhile, the front will have a single motor with a 1.9 kilowatt hour output, which produces 160 horsepower, giving the entire overall car 655 horsepower, just below the naturally aspirated CO6. But it's got a little drive, so off the line in a quarter mile, it will beat it. And zero to 60, 2.5 seconds, which is crazy. A quarter mile and 10.5 for a production car is mind blowing. I don't think you realize how fast that is. I don't think people are really understanding a 2.9, a three second car to 2.5 to 60. You can really feel that. It's a lot. It doesn't sound like a lot of paper, but in your eyeballs and your butt, you can really feel it. And the cost will be just north of $102,000. Compare that to its closest all-wheel drive hybrid competitor, the NSX, and that starts at $171,000 plus. And there are a couple new colors coming for 2024 for the E-Ray launch. And then you have the, I don't know the name of it, but it's like a lighter blue. It's not quite Rafa blue. It's not quite Lakehart blue. It's a really nice blue. It reminds me of Electron Blue from the C5Z days. And I do like it. And then you have the cacti, which is a very light green. People hate it. I honestly don't mind it. So, full disclosure, when I took delivery of this guy last month, and I absolutely love this car, don't get me wrong, I did put my name on the E-Ray list. And yes, when I take delivery, it will be MSRP. If you want to know how to do that, follow, watch two videos ago, I explained the process of getting a C8 at MSRP. And you know what color right now I sort of want to get, and I probably will? The cacti. Yeah, you heard me right. The one that everyone hates. I kind of like it. And I kind of want to go with the, the the flagship color, you know. I think that car, with I'm, I'm being dead serious, with a five spoke, a darker wheel, with orange calipers. I don't know about interior. I think it'll look really sharp. But that's more to follow. That's two years away, you know. And real quick, there are still two more trims, maybe three of C8 Corvettes to come, and that is the Zero One and the Zora. Uh, my predictions for those: uh, the Zero One will have the flat plane crank, probably turbocharged in some manner, maybe turbo, I don't know. And I'd imagine the Zora would probably use that same power plant on back and probably utilize the all-wheel drive system with the motors up front. We're talking zero to 60 times the 1.8, which is crazy. I mean, you might pass out, you know, that's, that's insane, that's fast. Again, that's speculation. And there's also rumors of a all-electric C8. So on that, who gives a shit? But seriously, if they do make an all-electric C8 Corvette, what do they do with the engine bay? Because all the batteries will be below. Uh, the motors are tiny. You're going to make it a two plus two. Like put some seats in the back so you can take your friends for a drive, all, all three of them going. Those are electric noises. Yay. Well, that's all I got for today, boys and girls. I thought it was kind of fun to talk about the E-Ray. It's been all over my news feed. People have been emailing me, messaging me all freaking day long, which I don't mind. I like Corvettes. But look it out. But uh, no, I am very interested. I think it's going to be more of a capable platform than the Z06 as far as uh, uh, doing upgrades and pushing it to its limits, etc. The Z06 is also a very nice car. Just the, the flat play makes me a little nervous. New technology for GM, but we'll see how that plays out. Um, I'm curious to know your take on this. I know most Corvette followers have been bombarded with uh, E-Ray videos and stuff all day. I thought I might as well throw one up too, because I am actually very, very interested in it. I have been following this for about two years, the E-Ray that is. So, all right guys, I'm gonna edit this and get to bed. You guys take care, I'll see you next time. Mark out.